Hello viewers, good afternoon. Once again we draw a spotlight to the Republic of Kenya and perhaps for obvious reasons they are experiencing a transition in leadership from one elected leader, His Excellency Uru Mongai Kenyatta, to now the new president, His Excellency Dr. William Samoei Ruto. And perhaps there are so many lessons for us to draw as a region. But I think most importantly, Kenya has managed to challenge the stereotype that African states are not ready for a multi-party dispensation and that they cannot organize themselves democratically and practice modern day politics well. Kenya has, you know, set the bar very high for the region. And perhaps that's why this particular show has spared once again another episode to discuss this particular topic. And I'm joined by a panel of distinguished senior citizens of this country. And with no particular order, I'll begin by introducing the guest and the first timer on this show. A veteran politician, former member of parliament, but also former IGG in the government of Uganda. Honorable Augustine Ruzindana, many thanks for joining us this afternoon, sir. Thank you. Yes. Very good afternoon, viewers and listeners. I am not sure whether there are only viewers <laughs> or whether there are radio <laughs> connections as well. Yes. I am glad to be here. Thank you very much, Honorable. Mm -hmm. And uh, next to Honorable and next to myself is Dr. Sarah Birete. Dr. Sarah is a lawyer, but also the executive director of Center for Constitutional Governance here in Uganda. Dr. Many thanks for joining us. Thank you and uh, good afternoon, viewers. Yes, thank you. Then the last panelist on the show, Mr. Joseph Othieno, a Uganda People's Congress ideologue and a media journalist, but also a frequent uh, panelist on this particular show. Many thanks for joining us, senior. It's always to be good to be here. My name is Ocheno, not Othieno, but I'm yeah. delighted to have uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Rosindana with us here. He's an elder, responsible citizen, and uh, I think Sarah and I uh, will cherish his presence today. Oh. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable, let me just begin with you. Mm -hmm. You know, being our visitor and, and our guest today, I have heard you make a statement, and you said that um, you belong to the N to the NRA, but not the NRM. Something like that. What has that to go to do with the Kenya? <laughs> Those are starters. We understand he enjoyed a fantastic experience at university with the five course dinner, so tell him. <laughs> so, so, so perhaps, Honorable, mm. why I'm trying to draw that insight is because you acknowledge that there's a difference between the NRA. M or the, NRA, the movement, the movement system, system that you are a part of vis-a-vis yeah. -vis what we have today. Mm. But what, what, what difference do you identify between our, the, the politics of Uganda and why we have not had what I would call a peaceful transition of power between one elected leader to another, mm. and yet Kenya is now having, I think, its third peaceful transition of power. I know that we shall discuss Kenya more, but let us first speak perspective mm. from Uganda domestically. Uh, but before I use my thought, because mm. when you mentioned Kenya, mm. um, I first went to Nairobi as a student mm. in 1967, as a student in the University of East Africa. And since 1967, uh, I, I, I am acquainted with the affairs of Kenya. Mm. Uh, fairly well. Mm. And um, when I went out of parliament in 2006, um, I, 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 I worked from the base in Nairobi for about four years uh, as a consultant and very many things. So I'm quite acquainted with, uh, okay. with Kenya and I, I was happy to hear your introduction of the subject. Now, with regard to my politics within Uganda, um, well, I am known to have been uh, quite active uh, during the 70s. Um, I am a founder, a member of RONASA. Uh, I was in the first uh, uh, unit that went for military training with the with Frelimo. Um and I uh, was involved in uh, the abortive uh, trial when we tried to overthrow Amin in September 1972. And I have been active 
since since then. Um, with regard to NRM, I am a founder. Uh, I, uh, by the time I, I was in government from 1986, <coughs> as IGG, I am the first uh, 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 the founder IGG. I was IGG for ten years. Mm. Uh, I was in a member of the Constituent Assembly uh, that uh, uh, made the Constitution, which is still in place after many amendments. Um, in Parliament, I was uh, the first chair of the Public Accounts Committee under the new Constitution and for five years. And um, the shape in which that committee and the uh, the local government committee uh, is, is, is a result of our work. The local government uh, accounts committee was part of the public accounts committee at our time. And we recommended <coughs> that it should be split because the work was too much. Uh, one committee could not cover it. And it was, it was split. Was split. Um, I, I I have been involved within civil society also. I am a founder member of Transparency International, the international one, and the, and the Ugandan one. Mm. Uh, and I have been on the advisory board of Transparency International, the international one, until about three years ago. I am on the advisory board of the Ugandan one, um, now, and uh, I am a founder member of this one. So I am involved in, in, in lots of things. I, I've been involved in, in, in uh, Amnesty International. I've been involved in conflict resolution, uh, locally and internationally. Uh, in 1986, I was part of uh, a mission to uh, to the Philippines immediately after the overthrow of Marcos, the, uh, the older, the father of the current president. And so I have been around and, uh, and have a bit of some, okay. a bit of some experience in a few things. Yes, thank you, Honorable. Just mm -hmm. before I move to Mr. Cheno, mm -hmm. just one last uh, question. Um, I was born in the Museveni era and mm -hmm. I have seen only one leader. Mm -hmm. Would someone be right to say that Uganda has not had a peaceful transition of power from one leader to another? No, it, 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 you don't have to ask the question. That's the fact. Mm. We, we, we have not had uh, a peaceful transition uh, except perhaps 1980. Mm. 1980, <coughs> uh, there was a peaceful transition from the military commission Mm. to the UPC government, irrespective mm. of whatever opinions people may have. Mm. Uh, but there was, a mil uh, there was a military commission which was running the country uh, after, oh, after the overthrow of Benaisa. Mm. And then there was a peaceful handover after the elections of mm. 1980. I think that's the only one. All right. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> another one from the colonial administration. Uh, yes, from the colonial one. <laughs> uh, in, in a way, yes. From, yeah. Was yeah. that peaceful? Yeah. Yeah, the, the, yeah. It was peaceful as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, for the handover from the colonial <laughs> the one to the, to the independence government. Yeah. Yes, that was peaceful. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, but, <laughs> let me just uh, go to Mr. Cheno. Mr. Cheno, mm. I think this week, um, and in 1980, I, I was then UPM. Oh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Very interesting. I was, Very I interesting. was UPM. <laughs> Very interesting. Yes, uh, Mr. Cheno, yeah. we are speaking about transition in Kenya. And I think it has matured to the, the level of appointing of cabinet secretaries. Have you taken time to observe the context and the nature through which Dr. William Ruto, now president, has put up that team? Is there anything peculiar? Is there something to, to maybe discuss about the way the team has been constituted? Because some have argued that it's about rewarding loyalties, you know, giving back to those who were, those who stood with you during the tough times, but not exactly picking out the professionals to maybe guide, guide the country. So what do you make of that? 
of how the cabinet has been no, <clears throat> no you've really uh, nearly put me on the spot but uh, in a fine way mm -hmm. but i just want to go back to Muse rosindana i know that sometimes when we come to these shows i tend to be slightly loud mm -hmm. um, in many ways but it's usually deliberate mm -hmm. i think the account merely introductory account of he's given to us yeah. uh, tells you how much mm. um, history is held and how much your generation and particularly the generation which is really the primary audience of this mm. uh, the citizens chat room um, needs to gain from our elders like him and perhaps maybe you know you might consider with your producers in future having a show in which possibly People like me are not possibly even there, but then you just have a conversation with them so that when I come in, you know that some of us are just complimenting or supplementing them. Yeah. Because there's some great guys, yeah. uh, men and women, who've done great work for this country, regardless of the circumstances and mm. if you like the political umbrella they're wearing and that are not seen. And yet those are the foundations which some of us build and those are the foundations we want to hand over to yourselves and those are the foundations that we need to be able to take us to the future. Mm. And that possibly the foundations that we're able to learn from the original uh, question mm. about the realities of Uganda so that we're able to determine the future. But mm. So therefore, very quickly on this one, um, it, it's, it's amazing. <clears throat> While the, the, the cabinet list in Kenya was released, I very quickly went online and found... Uh, uh, Mr. Rutu speaking mm. and that was the beginning of the introduction of the list and he went through the names now of course without prejudice I put a disclaimer I'm Ugandan Luo mm -hmm. but it's not about the Luoism considering mm. the politics of Kenya that we have mm. and considering that the fact that we want to use Kenya as an example for which we want uh, assemblies of rallying around questions of our identities and questions of the future I found that slightly disappointing that the whole thing is still very partisan and that shows that whatever the outcome, and it's a fantastic outcome, um, that the country is still relatively divided. And that to the extent, therefore, that uh, you find in an appointment that uh, one in passing minister for information is the guy from Nyanza, mm -hmm. tells you, not necessarily that you can blame Ruto, you know, it, it, but tells you possibly how divided by and large the country still is. Mm. And so therefore possibly may, may be the case that some people are not willing to take the position. But that's how divided it is. So basically I think that's a warning shot. Yeah. But in terms of the specificity, mm. there's something going to Mr. Madrid, if I, I don't lose that point, are you saying the cabinet mm, that yeah. is not balanced in terms of national outlook? Um, um, no, and that's basically what I'm saying. This mm. possibly could do better, but I mean, um, that is based on what okay. I've, I've, I've actually said from mm. my point of view. Mm. Mm. And, and it's not necessary to make some other people outside Kenya to be excited because mm. Kenya still is quite up there. But mm. I'm just putting in context because mm. it's the bar that we want to pick, it's the bar that we genuinely want to pick running with, not only as a, as a region, but indeed as a continent. And perhaps therefore that when Uganda is able to pick up to that, mm. Uganda should be able to pick it and run with it excellent. Mm. So, but back to this, I... Uh, I saw something that did the rounds, which uh, 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 that says that um, apparently the chairperson of the Electoral Commission's daughter is the, the new health minister, equivalent to Uganda's case. Mm. And that the, <laughs> the, uh, uh, one of the chief ju the justice's brothers, Professor Susan Wafula? Yes, mm. uh, Chibukatis, mm. is uh, the treasury chief. Mm. And that the chief. Sorry? One yes, uh, Justin Joking, Google's brother. Mm. is the treasury chief. Mm. And that Chief Justice's brother is now the, IGP, the, 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 the Inspector General of Police. And, and so that sort of is really, really sort of comes it down. And that's why I said, I'm mm. not quite sure it's something that I would have wanted mm. to, yeah. to very much amplify. Yeah. But since you asked me very directly, mm. I think I'll mm. run with that. Yeah. And yet I would have thought that um, um, what Mr. Ruto needs is mm. to push a national need and reconciliation mm. uh, uh, governance and to prove his opponent's right, whatever mm. the arguments are. Yeah. So that in itself is something that struck me very quickly. And for that, yeah. uh, uh, I don't know what Sarah's opinion so is. So you think it is more of a reward system? <laughs> it, it's a, it's it's a, a reward. direct reward system. Yeah, it's, and it's uh, a, and, yeah. and, and for, for Kenya, in fact, part of the problem with, it, with them is, and I'm acute about this, Mr. Rizendan, I was talking mm. to some of mm. your colleagues, actually, mm. uh, generation of colleagues, including at the University of Nairobi in Kenya, mm. uh, uh, around the election times, that uh, I hope that quickly they're able to move away from, we're crediting them, with the multi-partisan transfer of governments. Mm. But I still believe that they still need to do better mm. uh, when it comes to institutional political parties, mm. uh, parties linked to values, mm. and politics less about 
personalities and so therefore identities. Mm. And in that way, Kenya would have taken the lead. Mm. And going on from wherever it is, I think it's a bit faltered a bit. Yeah. But they're still better than far, far better than yeah. where we are. And so I hope they're mm. able to pick leaf and then to be to build uh, uh, movements and political parties and organizations around values and around issues mm. where tomorrow you can say, you know, post to root to, you know, mm. what does root to represent yeah. in Kenya in the broader scheme of things. Yeah. And where do young voters, for example, do they mm. run to root because it's an alleged Hustler, mm. or do they go to Raila because he's a person who's big government to you know big public services, big mm. health care, mm. and can you ideologically break in between? Mm. And the experts on ideology are the museum we have here today. All right, thank you, Doctor. Let me just uh, come to you. First of all, I think I'll also need to get your comment regarding how William Ruto has put up his cabinet, but also most importantly, do you think that because the the election itself was highly contested between Kenya Kwanza and Azimiola Omoja? Do you think that Kenyans are managing to move beyond the election? Because we haven't seen Right Honorable Raila Odinga trying to maybe demonstrate. I mean, it has been all rosy so far. Do you think that Kenyans have managed to move beyond the politics and are putting the country first as they transition in this time? No violence? I, I, yeah, of course the idea the, the Kenya is moving forward democratically. But that doesn't mean that they don't have challenges. Mm -hmm. They have challenges. First of all, Ruto assumes the presidency of a divided nation, which is 50-50 split. Mm -hmm. The margin of 200 votes with a 65% voter turnout mm -hmm. is not something that can put the president in a comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So the first three years of Ruto, he has to spend them campaigning mm. to, to win over mm. the hearts of a divided nation. Mm. I know that the outcome was contested in a, and a, of course there were talks about the judiciary, including the speech of Uhuru Kenyatta, which was an angry speech after the court mm. verdict. Mm. And he, he seemed a bit disappointed that the institutions they had built, thinking they are independent to hold the true wishes of the people in a democracy, he thought they had foreign shot. Mm -hmm. But given that Uganda, we are speaking from under the cave, then of course it is still draws lessons for us, but that doesn't mean that Kenya doesn't have challenges, challenges. to work on. Mm -hmm. The revelation by Mr. Chieno here, further dampens the mood. Because uh, if you look at a reward, a cabinet reward to mm. Shebukati's family, a cabinet reward to Chief Justice's family, what does that insinuate? Mm. Does it insinuate that this was an agreement before? Mm. I, I, I scratch my back, I scratch your back. In a ideal, in, a, in an ideal situation, mm. family members are free to mm. hold yeah. Yeah. independent <laughs> views, mm. even when they have mm. a relative serving mm. in government. Mm. But what implications does it create, given the allegations by Azimio? Mm. 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 So you have allegations, and, and in Africa, we say there is no smoke without fire. There is no mm. yeah, smoke mm. without mm. fire. You have allegations that Chebukati was compromised, although they could not prove. You have allegations that the chief justice and the judiciary were compromised, although there is no proof. Mm. But now the cabinet rewards could work as proof to, to those allegations. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think it, it creates a dampening mood, a serious dampening mood. I, however, the mm. cabinet still has positives to talk about. Mm -hmm. One is the nature of transition that we are here to share and mm. see if there are lessons mm -hmm. for Uganda. Even when Uhuru handed over, the cabinet remained behind mm. to serve the incoming president mm. until when a new cabinet was announced. announced. That is a transition yeah. which is embedded in Kenya's law. Mm. Another lesson for us to learn on the transition is the independence of institutions. Mm. 
to the extent that out of the outgoing cabinet, one minister has been retained, mm. one cabinet secretary mm. has been retained to serve mm. in the incoming cabinet. In mm. our situation here, you have President Museven treating opposition as terrorists, because I think even the word enemies is not enough yeah. <laughs> to describe the contempt yeah. within which President Museven holds opposition in this country. First of all, it's unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. The conduct of President Museven as regards opposition in this country is unconstitutional, and he violates the constitution on a daily basis. The, the, the nature, the mindset that we have created in this country to, to look at opposition as outcasts, to look at opposition as these people want to take our power but by, by people serving in public service, especially the military, is unconstitutional and must be denounced at all levels of citizens' engagement. The conduct of the military in this country the mindset to say we are holding our thing, mm. referring to power. The power that is enshrined in the constitution that is derived from the people is unconstitutional. And we must denounce that mentality. So still we have a million lessons to learn from Kenya. Mm. I was in Kenya for mm. two weeks. Yeah. The military was not anywhere in sight. Nobody mm. has seen the military. Up mm. to date, mm. they're in the barracks. Mm. The police was minimum. Basic. They used the GC, the local police, the local police. not the top national yeah. police. In elections, in our case, you have the police looking at the people with the, the dissenting opinion, of, of political opinions. As terrorists, we treat them worse than Boko Haram and Konye in this country. That is unconstitutional. I don't know when we shall shift, mm. and I'm mm -hmm. sorry to use that word, mm -hmm. primitive mentality mm. in our politics, civil, civilized politics in this country. I hope you can see that soon. <laughs> but honorable, <laughs> let me come to you. Mm. Uh, there seems to be a pattern that uh, leaders tend to use when appointing the cabinet ministers or the cabinet secretaries. And perhaps this is because of the psychobiography, the environment under which they are operating, or maybe the circumstances under which their electoral process was. In your own experience, from what you have seen, from what you have observed, what do you think presidents usually look out for when putting up a team or putting up a cabinet? Is it more of a reward? Opportunity, or it is they they look out for the grit, the merit that if I'm if I'm appointing a an, an agriculture secretary, they must have a background of agriculture so that they can you know know what seedlings to. So, what do you think informs the decisions of most of these leaders? <coughs> um, there are several co considerations mm. at the same time. <laughs> um, now, in the Kenya context, part of the if I may talk about the stability mm. there. Mm. Mm. Part of the stability is that uh, when you see the succession after Moi, mm. all the successors have a background in Kano. Mm. Huh? All okay. of them have a background in Kano. Oh, okay. There is no way uh, Mai Kibaki could have gone after Moi, Moi's record mm. in Kano. He was a part of it. Mm. He was vice president, he was minister for a very long time. Mm. <coughs> then after, after Kibaki, you have Uhuru, who had been leader of, of Kanu after Moi. Mm. And then his father was president and so on. And so part of the, of the stability you see in Kenya is what you would observe in many, in, in many in countries, even the developed one. If you see America, for example, most of the presidents have been Republican. That gives it continuity. <coughs> if you look at Japan, the, the Liberal Party has been in power indefinitely. Mm -hmm. Prime Minister has changed so, so, so often and so on. Now, what we learn from Kenya, we, we, we should go a, a, a lot deeper. Mm -hmm. 
uh, where they have advanced is not necessarily in, in the politics. Mm. In the politics, there is no market party in Kenya. There are single mm. parties in, in every region. Mm. Mm. There, is no, there is no market party in Kisumu, there is no, no market party mm. in, in Kericho. <laughs> Uh, it's, a, it's a single party uh, in, every, in every region, in, in, in every region, uh, and of course there are many parties, but it, it, every, every region has got its, its own party. Mm. So balancing it by appointment is, is quite problematic, mm. but the, a new president wants to stand after five years, so he's building in a base for his election in the next five years. That is one. Mm -hmm. But in the process, then he is consolidating the areas where he got support. Mm -hmm. So most of the ministers are from central, mm -hmm. even more than from, mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. the Kalenji, mm -hmm. uh, the Rift Valley <coughs> area, area. But once you add the central and Rift Valley, they are more than 50%. Uh, the Western region, uh, of, of Mudavadi and the Wetangula and so on, mm. they are virtually marginal in, in the appointments and the cost and, mm. and the east and so on. So you can see him consolidating for the next election. Mm. Mm. And so there is no way he was going to bring in uh, people from Kisumu, from, uh, from Mukisi, yeah, because he knows the results will be the same in the next in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the next election. So what should we learn? We should learn that in Kenya, they have a, an electoral system which is similar to ours here. Mm. A first past the post. And so uh, it does not give a majority the type of government. Mm. They won by 200,000 votes. Yeah. Mm? Mm. Very marginal. Mm. So that narrow winning should have dictated a, 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 a united government, mm. a government for all bringing in everybody. Mm. But it can't because mm. he knows he knows the uh, mm. the, the next election will be, the same. Uh, will be coming, and so mm. uh, is consolidating. And so some of us have been advocating that we really need to move away from fast past the post. Mm. It marginalizes. It marginalizes uh, people. Mm. Uh, it, it most the, the system which is prevalent in most of the world is is a, 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 a least proportional representation system. Mm. If they didn't have it in South Africa, for example, mm. the whites and Indians would have disappeared uh, politically. Mm. Only black people would have would have come. Mm. But when you have uh, uh, a proportional representation system, you will cater for the youth, you will cater for women. <coughs> for example, our, the, this system of ours completely eliminates the youth and women because you don't have money. And these, these things need a, a lot of money. Mm. It, it marginalizes uh, uh, groups with small numbers. Mm. And, uh, and and so on. When, so we should, at the same time, be thinking, how do we improve our system? In this country, why do you find people very angry? Every election, however it is conducted, the collective uh, uh, opposition, that is the, the groups that are outside the government, mm. get uh, around 40% plus. But when you go to the system of, of parliament, of local governments, of council, they are not there. Mm. Uh, same as women. Women disappear because mm. they don't have the resources uh, to, 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 to... The youth completely. You, got, you, you have a token five representatives in, in the parliament mm. and, and, and so on. When you have. So we need to examine, and not for only Kenya and here, but if it, uh, they had... Uh, uh, a proportional representation system mm. in Kenya. Mm. This marginalization of large areas uh, li like Western Kenya and, and Nyanza and coast and so on would mm. not take place. Mm. And, and, and it is the same here. The same here you will find 
the president has a very large cabinet by trying to say, oh, do I have someone from there? Yeah. Do I have someone from here? And yet, even if you pick someone from there and from there, it doesn't become representative. Mm. And so it would, and, and those who lose, always lose and they remain angry. Mm. Because if you had 40 percent, I, I won't even talk about the opposition. In mm. Uganda, the NRM got about 40 percent, mm. but they are nowhere. Mm. They, they seem to have been wiped out. And, and they even got angry and began making alliances from outside. <laughs> Uganda and, uh, and so and so if you had a system which would have reflected mm. <laughs> that 40 percent the anger would not have been that much mm. <laughs> but, uh, but did they get 40 percent yes, yes, yes the, 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 the correct the total of the total of votes it would be interesting to have a look here yeah, it's, it's around there mm. uh, uh, but you disappear with 40 percent mm. and and so we need a system <laughs> yeah, that actually tries to to, to balance Mm. Uh, uh, to balance it. And you find it, if the, the co continental Europe, continental Europe uses mm. proportional representation. Mm. Germany uses both uh, mm. uh, proportional and, and so on. Most of Africa, because the, uh, the French speaking countries use proportional representation. And now that we have got the Congo, DRC, in East African uh, community, we will have to examine uh, the, 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 the electoral system, because there is, 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 is a proportional, and the Burundi and the Rwanda also, it's proportional representation. So we, have, we, we should examine it and, 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 and see. But we have a lesson, the final lesson I would like to point out from Kenya is that, for example, the Ruto government will not go after the businesses of Raila. Raila's businesses will continue. Uh, uh, properly and, and all the others will, will continue uh, uh, properly. Their parties can get funding without uh, the, those funding them mm. uh, uh, being persecuted because they are funding the opposition and so I mm. think that's something we have got to learn. They are not going to go after, mm. after uh, Uhuru Kenyatta's businesses because he supported the right hour. And no end you will close. No, no, no. So, so that's, that is something we, <laughs> we, we actually need. Mm. Uh, that is something we need to learn. Mm. Two, <clears throat> their businesses, for example, uh, the, in this region, they are thriving because government puts them. Uh, after 2006, I said I was in Nairobi. But the, this, this bank, the, the, what do you call it? Equity. Equity. Mm. It started during, during uh, uh, Kibaki's time. Virtually as a Kikuyu uh, uh, bank, they were calling it Moregizania, uh, the, the one which brings the people together. Mm -hmm. and, and, and now it is a, a big power. Mm. Because now, here we don't have a national bank now. And, and 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 so on. So you go to we get a big, big Congo coming, and people will be coming from Kenya going to to Congo to do business, and we don't have business people there. Mm. We don't have much in 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 in, 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 in the South Sudan, for example, mm. other than those selling tomatoes and <laughs> and, 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 and and so we we need to learn mm. the concrete things in 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 Kenya. Mm. Uh, that uh, elections, elections are, are bitter like everywhere else, but once they are finished, mm. uh, the, the anger that was there in elections is not, is not projected mm. uh, beyond the electoral period. Okay. Mm. Thank you very much, Honorable. Mm. Mr. Cheno, let me come to you. In 2017, right Honorable Rael Odinga, Post-election literally made the Jubilee government ungovernable with all these protests, uh, walk to work campaigns and all these things. This time round, he has chosen to take a back seat and he has allowed the transition to move peacefully. Can we examine for a bit the role of leaders and politicians in achieving a successful transition? Because now that he has sat back, I think we have been able to witness a peaceful really transition from one leader to another. 
So do you think that politicians or candidates have a big role to play in how a transition takes shape in any country? <clears throat> I have talked about the question of leadership on this program mm. again and again and again and again. And what Mr. Ruzindani talk about here is precisely that, leadership to me in the broadest sense. Um, somebody needs to emerge uh, in Kenya over and above all the challenges, the issues that we're talking about today and provide leadership, mm -hmm. whether in government or in opposition, by and large, Kenyans are coming up and taking, if in exceptional cases, mm -hmm. taking Kenya first. Mm -hmm. This country very quickly, urgently, and absolutely long overdue Uganda mm -hmm. needs a leader. We need leadership. So you're absolutely right. It's maybe perhaps too early <laughs> mm. to suggest that uh, we, we don't know what Rael is going to be thinking of next, mm. but certainly it will not be going to the bush, you know, um, but he, they will <laughs> very likely still going to be thinking about something, you mm. know, anyway. But you are right that they go civil. Mm. You're right that uh, when things get critical, they pull back and they look at the lives and properties of their citizens, their own names and integrities, their own contributions to what history books are writing about them. Mm -hmm. And that really has been railed. And to that, you have to give him absolute credit. Because even on this occasion, um, it could have gone either way because of some of the things that were the nuances we are suggesting here, sorry, is, is, is that it could have gone either way because yeah. there was substantial evidence, which you not necessarily proven in court, you know, which is a slightly different thing, but substantial evidence that there's terrible things. But we mm -hmm. don't want to inflame these. But it took leadership to calm this down in the name and in the interest of Kenya. Mm -hmm. I've also told this program that once upon a time, it took leadership in, 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 in Ghana mm. to bring the stability. And that leadership, interestingly, came from two political leaders, one of whom knew they had lost, but they didn't want to let go. Mm. But also the other, who knew where they were, but they're not prepared to go to the streets. Mm. And security services, um, who called these two guys, and you know, I've said it again, I want to repeat, mm. to say that, look, you guys, <laughs> We, we, you, the two of you know who has won these elections. We are watching, but we will take on the side of the Ghanaian people. Mm. These guys went ahead and took a position. And since that election, Ghana has continued. Mm. In this country, Uganda, as Sarah suggested, mm. soldiers in this country, people who are trained to defend this country, need to wake up and take a position that they're interested in this country first. And people in all sorts of institutions in this country need to know that for us, in those days of mm. National Union of Students of Uganda, NUSU, mm. that ours was... Uganda first, that we need to take Uganda first beyond anything else. That is leadership, whatever level it is. Mm. But before that also, linked to what um, the Rizundani is talking about, there's something very critical that we shouldn't lose. Um, I was paying attention because um, the idea of proportional representation as practiced in Kenya, or rather in, in Southern Africa, is extremely tempting. Mm. Most of Scandinavian Europe is proportional representation. UK whose parliamentary systems I admire and have lived experience does not, and there's huge campaigns for it. Uh, proportional representation takes place in the, the, the local uh, country, states, state governments, but not in central, central government. That's actually including the London Assembly. So something what they're looking at. Yeah. But to me, my problem is, in the absence of that, the issue is not that. The issue still comes back to leadership. Mm. At independence, UPC won a simple majority. But UPC was prepared to go to the national table and say, here's the government of national unity, let's come together. Mm. Now, that's leadership. Um, that's one. But while DP did not join and while K KY went, that government was by and large, and my elders here, generally nationally representative. And at no time was there any necessary indication that I'm necessarily rewarding. Mm. You know? Mm. Uh, and civil servants and technocrats were picked and chosen on merit. Mm. And that's what has happened in this country. Uh, in 1980, after the elections, you know, UPC didn't win in Buganda, you know, and um, the, the, the cabinet was most representative. Mm. And by alliance, again, going to the service and public service and things like that, you know, um, Museveni, without prejudice, came from a particular part of Uganda. But the head of Uganda Commercial Bank, which Museveni has gone ahead and killed, <laughs> was uh, Richard Kaijuka, you know, <laughs> chairman, managing director, extremely powerful, I respect him. You know, the, the, the governor of the Bank of Uganda, you know, uh, Mr. Leo Chibrango, you know, was governor of the Bank of Uganda. I'm just giving an example. Massive cabinet positions, you know, <laughs> where from areas where M7 came from. That's not about necessarily that simplistically. 
by and large, I think in terms of services to the country, mm. it may not even be about political appointments in terms of who's in cabinet minister. Mm. But do health services and facilities reach Chinoni? Mm. Uh, is it the case that you have to sort out Bugiri mm. simply because you want to claim that people voted erroneously? Mm. I think it's leadership. Mm. So before we do that, and even in the absence of uh, constitutional amendments and you know these electoral systems, we need to make sure that, well, these positions are taken. And so fair enough in Kenya, and I think Mr. Rizindana quite explains it, mm. that maybe at the end of the day, well, you know, <laughs> once the elections are taking place, you need to strategically go forward mm. in terms of planning for the next yes. election. I'm actually not quite sure it's necessarily that's the most important. I think the most important should be confidence, building confidence. And mm. like what a normal would say, let it be the evidence based on the services that we provided between now on the next three, four, five years, mm. rather than the men and women, in many cases, very few women, that you pick and choose to appoint in particular positions. But mm. yes, uh, 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 um, proportional representation is something mm. uh, worthy actively being considered mm. you know, uh, as part of a constitutional alternative mm. for, for Africa going forward. But uh, in Kenya, uh, you will take back credit to, 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 well. to, to Raila in terms of that. But also I understand that, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, Ruto seems to suggest that he's spoken to Raila. I've seen some suggest that uh, he is over exaggerating, he's over expressing, emphasizing mm. the cordiality of the relationship. Mm. But I know definitely it's not one for which somebody is trying to say that, well, I need to get another triple group of army trucks because I want to protect myself mm -hmm. from the other. It's not the case that in Kenya. And for mm -hmm. that, we need to give Kenya the, the, the credit and continue to look at them and mm. also continue to look at them as an example, but also to continue to push them mm. in areas where they think they are, like the kind of examples I'm trying to give. All right. But uh, the, other, the other small thing I can add on is that uh, it's not small, actually. The, the ministers are not members of parliament. So they, are chosen, they are chosen from outside, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. outside the parliament. Mm. Uh, and so the capacity of carrying out the, their, their roles where they are placed, that one is considered. Mm. irrespective oh, yeah, of yeah, where yeah. they Miss come from. Yeah. I think that that's something we may have to examine. Mm. The, may, we, the, the qualifications? No, the they, question of, 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 uh, of separating yeah, the executive yeah, from, from, the, the, from the legislature mm. yeah. so that members of the, of the executive are actually from outside the legislature. All right. Mm. Uh, but, but I think, if you don't much. mind, actually, mm. part of the thing that Sarah thought was saying was that whether or not, because part of your question was about the competency, the mm. relevant mm. qualifications of mm. personality that were appointed to, appoint to, to particular positions, mm. that while it's neither here nor there for ministerial positions, because really in governments where but, systems yeah, and institutions yeah, function, those are high where, yes, where you've got civil servants who actually do and technocrats that mm. do the job, remember the civil servants that pushed them in for over five years, mm. you know, mm. <laughs> and those who are incompetent mm. lawyers. Yeah. It's important still. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Doctor, let me come to you. Uh, and what? Yeah. Um, lady, sorry. <laughs> yes. From what Honorable says, he proposes proportional representation. And I think Mr. Chen has emphasized that as well. Are there certain undertones saying that there's need for a constitutional review or constitutional reforms? Because even on the question of separation of powers, whereby cabinet secretaries are picked from the general public and not from parliament, Perhaps we need to evaluate that with what uh, the Chief Justice then, Benjamin Nodoki, said that we cannot achieve complete separation of powers and therefore we settle for checks and balances. And, that, uh, and therefore it is okay for members of parliament to be part of the executive and you know, for them to work um, in a sort of uh, interconnected way. So which way do we go? Do we move for constitutional reforms where there is complete separation of powers, whereby if you're an MP, then you don't belong to cabinet, or we consider for checks and balances, but also are there any reforms that are being proposed here regarding proportional representation in cabinet? You know, ideally, mm. having representative democracy is good. But the question then that remains for Ugandans to, to resolve mm. is whether to go for transition first or whether to have yeah. representative democracy in our fraudulent context. Mm -hmm. Why do I call it fraudulent? I am on record for calling the type of democracy happening in Uganda today fraudulent. I am also on record, and I can substantiate, mm -hmm. for calling the exercise that we call elections in this country as fraudulent and not befitting mm -hmm. 
the mm. definition of erections. So when you have this background of, of fraudulent erections that do not necessarily quantify mm. the true will of the people, mm. when you are in a context where, for example, you have the military, which should be a national army, mm. Acting as a chief mobilizer of NRM and the chief defender of NRM and the NRM wing, part of, of Chadondo, in their conduct, implied and otherwise, they act as an appendage of NRM as a party, not as a national army. When you have governance institutions mm. that have corrupted, what is remaining is a name and the people who draw salaries, who draw taxpayers' money in the name of occupying, they, they are not befitting of those offices in the real meaning of the framers of our constitution. You have the, the electoral commission, although it is not on record, but they would not hesitate to, to, to read the results brought to them <laughs> by any other person other than what they've conducted. So you, you have a judiciary that when a, 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 a presidential challenger files an election, then they sneak into state house to consult on how to handle that matter. Then do you go for representative democracy in that context? I think as a person I would choose that we first transit and rebuild and then have representative democracy in a fair democratic context and mm. environment. All right, and uh, Doctor, you mentioned something to do with uh, presidential petitions. I think section 59 of the Presidential Elections Act provides that any, any party that is aggrieved with the electoral results has only 10 days to file a petition. Do you think that these days are enough? And that is why when you look at the ruling in 2016, even that of 2011, where the Supreme Court said that, yes, whereas there were certain irregularities, they were not enough to really overturn the election. Do you think that this number of days are insufficient for a petitioner to file a, a, a substantive case? And that's why each time they go to the Supreme Court, they are, you know, their, their, their petition never holds water. Or do you want to insist on, on the argument that there is no independence of the judiciary? Because, because perhaps, Actually, the, perhaps, the, the, perhaps the, the petitioners the are number, not presenting enough evidence. The number of evidence. days in Uganda are more than, than the number of days in Kenya. Mm. Mm. Um, then mm. where there's a limit is filing. Mm. But it was extended mm. a little bit through mm. their mama members petition. Mm. Yeah, there, there were extensions. Yeah, but that was at the whims and masses mm. of the Supreme Court judge at the time. But in and terms we of have the constitution... Amended the, the, the constitution has amended provide for those extensions. Okay, but mm. where, where is the lacuna? Do you think that at times we could be uh, criticizing the judiciary unfairly of the lack of independence when the petitioners actually don't present a substantive case and that well they can allege and all these things but they just don't prove their allegations? No, the, the, the Supreme Court put a quantitative, mm. uh, a, a, a quantitative measure Mm. that uh, they have to prove quantitatively that there mm. was enough. The substantial effect yes. mm. of your and, and, and that is That's where the time becomes very different. Mm. Mm. But the, the, uh, the, 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 the evidence cannot be assembled within mm. those days. Yeah. And you, 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 you get to the, the, the substantial. That's, that is very true. Yeah. But that, but then you can't also extend the period indefinitely. Indefinitely. Mm. Uh, because the, the, the new government has a, a time period in which it mm. has got to come in. Mm. Um, the, the, I think uh, yeah, there is something which I have taken part in, in a number of elections. Mm. I have won some, I have lost some. Mm. Now, the main problem is not the fraud. It is that the, the, the playing field is not level. <laughs> that, that, that is really the, uh, the, the, the main thing. Because uh, when, when you see eminent people, judges, commissioners of the electoral commission conducting 
a fraud. The, mm. It becomes a bit of a problem mm. uh, to conceptualize. The, 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 uh, what is true and which will be admitted by, by winners and losers is that the, the, the playing field is not level. Not level. Okay. And um, there was an allusion to the military, mm. uh, which uh, she, I, I think we, we, should, we should see the context in which we work. Mm. The NRA was the one which formed the NRM. Other mm. armed struggles, it is political parties that form the armed wing. Mm. Mm. But we had an armed uh, wing, which, because of the progress of the war, mm. uh, the, the formation of, of our, uh, resistance councils and so on, led to the need uh, to form uh, a political party. Mm. So from the very beginning, the NRA has been the backbone of the NRM. Mm. Now, the, delink the, link the linking it from the NRM when it is in power, mm. this would have to be, uh, uh, to, to be uh, constitutionally that has been done. Mm. Uh, the, 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 the UPDF <laughs> is constitutionally not, not linked to, uh, not linked to the, uh, the political, uh, to, to, to the political party. Mm. But that a person who has been part of a political movement. Mm. Uh, uh, that was waging war. Mm. And then suddenly you come and say, ah, now you are only a general. Mm. Ah, you have nothing to do. I think that is a bit of, uh, that, is where the, that is where the problem is. Mm. Mm. So that, that should, and, and, and you see it in the American, uh, uh, Washington became president virtually because of having been uh, the commander of the, of the, of the uh, secession. Mm. Secession from Britain. Mm. Uh, the, the Americans talk of independence. They never, they seceded. Mm. <laughs> they, they, they seceded from the British and, and Washington was the, the, the command. Mm. And when you see the part played by people in that, in, in that period and in, in the politics, you will see uh, that the uh, governments which came through armed struggle have similar characteristics, whether they are here or whether it is in Nicaragua, uh, whether they are they are the the linking of the political party uh, from from uh, institutions of state when it has uh, when it has power and so on mm. is not as easy as when CCM when a multi party system came into place. Uh, CCM decided to delink from the state. Uh, uh, Kivukoni College, which was... And uh, they are still in power. Uh, uh, Kivukoni College, which, was, uh, which is right to the Chankwanji one, mm. is a part, it, has no, it is not in government. Mm. Mm. They, they, they delinked it and got structured, whereas the LOC one here is a, a local government structure and an NRM structure. Uh, at, they, at the same time. The, 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 <laughs> the CCM has, has linked them. Mm. So if we are to, to, to uh, uh, deal with these issues, mm. that's where some of us still advocate for a national dialogue. Mm. So that someone uh, says there is this problem. Mm. The LOC1 ha, uh, is performing two factions. It is a local government structure, and it is also an NRM structure. What do we do? Mm. Hmm? NRM, the link from the state. Mm. And so, because you can't have some structures of a state being part of a political party. And also you say, but the army uh, should actually have the link itself. Mm. No, others have not. Mm. Others have not. Another DC is, is, is mainly a function, uh, functionary of the party, but he's a state functionary. Mm. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, and so on. So this is something we have to come together around the table and talk about. And, and, and because it is a fact, mm. it's a fact that the ROC1 is, 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 is a state structure and it is also uh, a party structure. 
So we at some stage we have mm. we have got to to, to deal with it. Them. And these things have got to be done rationally. Mm. You are not going to do on the, to go on the street and 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 have the, the linkages. No, there are many things. The the the, the logic of Buganda is is a cultural institution, but actually it has assumed the elements of a parliament. Mm. Now how are, how are you going to? continue having these informal things working and, and, and so on. That, that's why you have got to... Uh, the CA was a sort of, of, of dialogue, but, mm. to, but the next dialogue does not have to be in the form of a CA. Yeah. But it should be all inclusive and so on. Mm. And, 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 and um, the, the state, the Uganda state is a secular state, mm. but it has become virtually uh, 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 fused with religion. Mm. Mm. But <laughs> if I may ask, Honorable <laughs> yes. Zindana, mm. you, you were in the Constituent Assembly mm. making the 1995 Constitution. Did you have this conversation of delinking the party from the state? That, that's, what we, that's what is there in the Constitution. That's what is there in the Constitution. The political parties uh, uh, have their own space after outside the state. They are not part of the state at all. Okay. And, and you will see that the, the UPDF is, is a state is a state institution. It, uh, it, it, it has no, no linkages anywhere uh, with the political party. Mm. But when it comes to practice, mm. now that is a different matter. Mm. <coughs> mm. Uh, that's a, a different. So, now, to, to do these things rationally, we have to come together because uh, those practicing it may not actually accept what I am saying. Mm. They may not accept that the fusion is there. Mm. Huh? They, they tell you are. They, there is a chairman for Kampala, there is a chairman <laughs> for. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, the. the, 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 the uh, but when you go to Tanzania, they've been very, very serious. If the president is campaigning, the CCM will have to fund his campaign. Mm. Uh, the security will be there as, 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 as the president, but in the use of government uh, funding, if he goes in a helicopter, they will pay for it. Mm. If it that, now, these things are things you sit together uh, rationally, because someone practicing, say, no, no, we don't do this. Mm. Okay. But, 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 with your permission, <laughs> uh, Joseph, let me finish. Uh, yeah. With your permission, mm. because we, some of us need to learn mm. from your generation. In the debates in, in the CA, where you put army representatives in, in parliament, mm. as much as we were under the movement system, and you had limited part activities to headquarters by then and that to, was it 269? Mm -hmm. mm. The infamous mm. art call. Yes, yes. Mm. Did it ever occur to you that you were bringing the army into politics? And did it ever occur to you that at one time under multi-party dispensation, then that would create controversy? Mind, that was not a creation of the NRM. Uh, during immediately after me, mm. the NCC mm. had army representatives, mm. and uh, and mm. from the very beginning there was always an argument that the army needs to be informed of what is happening, so that it, there is no incentive for it to uh, uh, no to 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 overthrow overthrow a government because it does it's not aware it, it's not a valid argument, mm. and I have not supported. Mm. The inclusion of of the, mm. Mm. Of the military mm. uh, in the in the but it's it's in, you see in the NRC mm. the the parliament before, before the, the 1995 mm. mm. constitution parliament mm. the army was there mm. and so the continuation of this uh, practice has continued but that is still something that. Uh, that has to be needs to be talked about. There is no need to <coughs> attack the individual uh, army officers who are in parliament mm. because that is what the system is mm. in place mm. in. Mm. Mm. It's no, the, 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 it's a system there, and there are members in the parliament. Mm. There is no need to attack. Mm. Mm. No, 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 no. 
uh, but it is an anomaly that we can we can talk about why why the army why not the civil service as well mm. why not the, the, the police, the police okay. as well now you talk Honorable, about complete we... mm. complete separation of power it it does not take place anywhere mm. and it it can't take place now the 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 uh, but the, there are healthy relationships where yeah. each relationship you see if you 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 the, 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 there is a, a long history about the separation of power. Mm. But, but if you see uh, what happens, even in the Kenya case where uh, the ministers are from outside the parliament, mm. they still introduce the, the, the bills. Mm. The bills that come to parliament are still from them. Mm. Mm? Mm. Most of the, the bills are from, from the executive. Mm. Uh, parliament approves the budget of the executive. Mm. Uh, then, after the parliament has passed uh, a law, the assent process by the president mm. makes him party to, uh, to, uh, to, 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 to legislation. Mm. Uh, the, the judiciary, the same, the appointing process, even if there is a judicial service commission, mm. eventually, because appointment is an executive. Uh, yes. mm -hmm. So the president carries out the the, the, appoint, the appointment. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a prerogative of mercy where mm -hmm. uh, he can commute mm -hmm. the sentences passed by court and so on. Mm -hmm. All the, so there is nowhere you will have complete separation of a power. complete separation of power. Okay, thank you, Honorable. Mm -hmm. We need to take a short commercial break, mm -hmm. but that is has been very insightful. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm sure our viewers are enjoying and learning so much from this conversation. Well, we'll take a short commercial break. Just don't blink because when you do so, you'll miss out on something very important. See you shortly after this break. The Citizens Chat Room happens every Friday at 2 p.m. on Civic Space TV online on Facebook and YouTube. We invite you to be part of this conversation. Civic Space TV, freedom always. Yes, we'll be back from that short commercial break. Well, let's just dive straight to the chase. And Mr. Cheno, let me come to you. Um, Sarah has given us a very good replica of what happened in Kenya. There was no military involved in their political process. Mm. It was purely a civilian activity. But do you think that the NRM is being unfairly judged? Because I think the first inception of militarism in Uganda's politics was actually under the UPC government, when in 1967, in the process of enacting the Pigeon Hall Constitution, the UPC government had the had had parliament surrounded by military officers and that is how they passed so that's how they overthrew the 1966 constitution then you know formed a new one so in your own perspective in your honest opinion do you think that the nrm is being accused unfairly of having brought militarism in uganda's politics whereas it dates back to the upc government and of course subsequently the Idi Amin government was purely you know so you, you know, I would reject that in context, and it's absolutely not true. But obviously, the reality is that yes, 1967 happened, so did 1966. Mm. But when we have leaders of wisdom here in terms of conte contemporary uh, political history of Uganda, then we ask ourselves quite legitimately what were the events leading to 1967 constitution? The 1967 constitution was the Republican constitution, and uh, people like Sarah, and I'm sure even Mr. Augustine, if we go back. Mm. to actually the conflicts, particularly in some of these uh, 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 kingdom identities where uh, particular minorities uh, controlled and ruled the others and where in Ankole, uh, and I say it on camera, and the Bahima did not think that uh, other identities were human beings in the Republic. That's why Zerizindana's friend Yogabala calls it a revolution, you know, in terms of creating the Republican thing and breaking on the, 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 the back of the monarchies that we're actually now trying to conflict with an elected nation state, mm -hmm. number one. And then number two, uh, leading to 1966. 1966 was not a creation of UPC, it was a creation by Mengo, uh, where um, a, 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 an establishment you know, gives direct authority to central elected government to leave the soul of Uganda. So if that happened, we would not be sitting here, because as happens, we sit by privilege of traditional land of Uganda, but, but the capital of the Republic of Uganda. Mm. Those are the things that need to be investigated so that every conversation, like we're trying to be as fair and 
and objective to Kenya on both sides. Mm -hmm. You know, to be able to look back, and for once, I think this program needs perhaps, including my absence, to try and be fair to UPC. Mm -hmm. And the fairer you to UPC, the more you realize that you're actually learning and, uh, and understanding uh, mm -hmm. a genuine history of Uganda and a genuine history which will be able to help us to build on the point that I wanted to say to, to Museo Rizan, where and how can we build it in such a manner that your generation are able to learn better lessons and perhaps to do better than us. And that's why, much earlier, before I forget, as Sarah had hinted on a point, and I can, I'm quite happy to come back to the substantive element of the question, mm. on the question of national dialogue, because that's very important. Maybe national dialogue should take us back to a conversation in which we discuss uh, what exactly happened in 1967. Was it because uh, the discussion around the constitutional arrangement was taking place in parliament and there were troops that had not been seen? You know, did troops it hold on to people and rough people like the way NRA guys would rough people, including legislators, and if I may say so, the other day an attack on parliament by 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 by, by blanket guys. So you know, can is that compared to is that what was happening? It's neither here nor there. Yeah. Um nineteen sixty six, as I said, you know, a, a particular identity, just imagine the situation in which the the chief of Achole, I don't know who the what of Achole is, uh, uh, having a whole battalion in his place in, in Gulu. <laughs> you tell your chief of Achole to try, <laughs> you see how Museveni's guys will behave. That's what was happening in, in, in Buganda at the time leading to 1966. Yeah. And then finally, most importantly, the president. But the it has happened in Kasese. Well, <laughs> and, no. the and, and the consequence. No, but just, just and, and, Mr. Cheno, yeah, I, I don't let you. Of Kasis, yes. Mr. Cheno, mm. I don't let you off the hook so easily. Do you concede that the 1967 Constitution, the process through which it was promulgated, involved the military? No. It did not. It did not involve the military. I'm simply saying the fact that it's alleged that the soldiers were there. Because don't forget, 1965. Then how no. did the MPs okay. find the constitution no, no, in their pigeon holes? And it. By the government. It you're, wasn't. You were to you, them for you, debate, apparently. And they were subjugated through military. No, coercion. they were told no, to no. debate. They will find copies in their pigeon no. house. So there was no military power. Mm. But no. maybe. No, the, 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 no, I think the, 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 elder the, the main the, thing, just... the, the main thing for the, the, that period mm. uh, is a breakdown of the consensus, the post-independence consensus. consensus yeah. Yeah. The post-independent, there was a breakdown. Uh, uh, the consensus had depended on the alliance of UPC and the, and the Kabaka Kabaka Kabaka. Kabaka. Mm. and the DP acting as an opposition party. But you had a situation where the large numbers of the DP had mm -hmm. lost and, and the consensus with, uh, with Uganda had broken down. And not necessarily in, in 66, it starts earlier mm. uh, with the lost counties. 64, 65. Uh, yeah. The lost counties uh, referendum, mm. uh, the mutiny of the army. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the army, the mutiny was not only here, it was in the whole of East Africa. Uh, the, 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 the armies that came from the British, they, they all mutinied at the same time in Kenya, Uganda, and, and Tanzania. In, in Tanzania, uh, Nyerere dismissed the whole of it and created a new one. Mm. Uh, here we con there was uh, 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 now uh, I, I think the, the the details of of some of these things that happened in the in, in, we we don't have enough time to go mm. into. Mm. But the main thing is that the consensus, mm. the consensus that was there, actually ceased to be there. Mm. And, and and contradictions continued building up until the coup. Mm. That all, all, all those all those from the Vendaiga uh, events and the referendum of the lost counties and and so on, they they, they culminated in the coup. Mm. Uh, the major coup is the coup of, of 1971, uh, and 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 then the subsequent the, the subsequent. Now, what we were talking about is how do we create a consensus mm -hmm. now? Mm -hmm. Because the situation in which we are is very, very explosive. You young people, this is a country of young people. And, and, and you are not exactly fitting within, within the formula that exists now. And once in a while, there is an outburst of you young people. Uh, you, you, you saw it. Uh, and the pretexts are, are, are not huge. You saw the, 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 the Kayunga incident, mm. uh, 
how, how there was an explosion here. Uh, you saw the explosion uh, after the arrest of, of Bob Wine during, uh, during the, uh, the, the electoral period and so on. I saw uh, those of us who advocate for uh, a national dialogue, we, we see that the situation is volatile. The situation is, the, 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 there is no consensus uh, that is binding, for example, the political class. Mm. Uh, uh, the, 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 there is a lot of uh, movement this way and that way. Uh, wh when you look at our political parties now, do we have political parties now? Do we have a, a ruling political party? The, 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 the speaker was... Uh, FDC yesterday, mm. the deputy speaker was FDC yesterday. The, 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 the minister of justice uh, the, is the, DP. The, uh, uh, and uh, and, and so, so, what is the consensus that leads to this type of thing? Uh, it's not like the, the one you were, the, it, it, was it you who talked about it? Uh, in, in 1986, the broad based government mm. uh, uh, of the movement system. It had its negative effects of, of muzzling parties and so on. But it was a lot more inclusive mm. that, than this fishing of, mm. of, of people from mm. here and, and there. And then the broadening of the NRC mm. brought in uh, other members of the political parties and so on. And, and uh, those who participated in that period, it, it was uh, uh, not harmonious exactly. Mm. But you didn't have the tension that there is now. Mm. No, there was a lot of hope. Mm. Uh, people were hopeful that, uh, uh, for example, the transition would take place into a proper multi-party system. Mm. Uh, and those who talk about the transition is that that has never happened. Mm. It, didn't, it didn't happen. The move, the move from the movement system into a multi-party system has not exactly occurred. Mm. The movement system operates side by side with, with the political parties. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm. Okay. Uh, the, 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 the staying in, in Abeya, no, NRM, NRM uh, uh, acts as a party, but also as a movement system. The state. Oh. Because the, so the, the, your, the, your the, the, the Yes. Now, th these are some of the things we could disentangle. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, uh, doctor, if you don't mind, just doctor. to conclude on, okay. on, on that, because I put it to, to, to Mze, mm -hmm. because actually he's our lead guest, but it's also the, the wisdom head for us today, but also mm -hmm. going forward, I think it's important that I want to repeat, we genuinely need to have a program in which uh, uh, these elders of us are able to try and help us unpick these things, mm -hmm. so that maybe sometimes Sarah and I conversations is not like the, the usual suspects. Mm -hmm. On the question of the military, as I said, that regardless of whatever may have happened in 1967, so mm -hmm. even in the very least likely event mm -hmm. that UPC um, used a spare hand of the military, which they did not, and mm -hmm. you can go and check and we shall have a conversation, it does not justify having gone through what they did from UPM and uh, NRA, as he talks about it, to reach today, Mm. Um, that somebody in the leadership of NRA, NRM today does not say, you guys, um, we've gone through this mm. over all these other years. Where is the state of our country? Mm. Where is the state of the region? Mm. Where is the state of our continent? After many of them claim that they're Pan-Africanists. And mm. where do we genuinely want to take posterity? Yeah. I genuinely cannot overemphasize that enough. I think that's the point that I was trying to talk about much earlier. All right, thank you. Doctor, let me just come to you. And perhaps we need to go back to Kenya as we compare with uh, the case in Uganda. I think the, the current Kenya's transition process, I think has had, it has seen so many women playing crucial roles. From, uh, for example, the Azimiola Moja running mate, that was a lady on that, on that team. You come to the IEBCD. IEBC, it was deputized by a woman. The chief justice under which the, 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 the point that all this was put to bed was <laughs> headed by a woman. So, and the deputy. Yes. So, mm -hmm. so do you think that women are actually beginning to take up a fundamental roles in political processes, not only in Kenya, but also in Uganda? You know, globally, the future is female. Mm. <laughs> the future is female, both in demographics, the, mm. the women are majority, 
but also in practice, women are practical, more practical. Mm. And, uh, and I hope the gentlemen will agree with me on the point. Not only concur, I'm a feminist. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> women are practical in whatever they do. And, 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 and they are, you know, natural life givers. Because life. why I ask is, yes, I'm, I'm coming you to criticized your, your... the Supreme Court. And you say that no, no, no. there were certain allegations that they were compromised. And there was you see, a woman I'm coming at the top, to, to, by when it comes woman. to values and conduct, mm. yeah. it is not gender specific. <laughs> no. It is about a person. That's right. It is about an individual. Mm. It does not matter whether you are male or female. Mm. It, it zeroes down on a person's values. Mm. I, one as a, as a practitioner in courts, I follow court processes whenever I can. And I follow the Kenyan court petition, both the previous one in 2017 and this one on a daily basis. So I can say that I followed religiously. But I've also followed the Kenyan politics through my youth. Mm. I admired more of the Kenyan politics than Ugandan politics, even when there was seeming a the, what I would call artificial or stability under movement system. It helped us transit mm. from a certain level, but that transition should have been shorter than what we went for under the movement system that created opportunity. For opportunists smuggle a movement system in our constitution and create a party through it. Both in symbols, the movement bus. Mm. I saw it as a young person, mm. as a symbol of a movement system. Yellow was a car of a movement system. Mm. The name NRM mm. is in our constitution under Article 168 mm. as an alternative political system. Mm. So how do you get an alternative political system and call it a party? And you are saying there are two political systems. Movement system, multi party system. And then you say, when one is in operation, <laughs> another abeyance. one is in abeyance. abeyance. <laughs> you are a law student. So you pick the system in abeyance, mm. and you call it your party. What kind of fraud is that? What kind of fraud? And unfortunately, you young people are caught up in that fraud. Mm. I, I hope that as you, you get to move your uh, literature in law, legal knowledge, then you will realize the fraud, the fraud and fight it, where it is mothered. Mm. So we have, that's why I say what is happening in Uganda is a fraud. Mm. It is even right from the constitution. Mm. So you, you go to the women participation. Mm. You know, going through the Beijing plan of action, now mm. we are celebrating Beijing plus 27, mm. the 1995, and this was the fourth World Women's Conference mm. that set up the, the critical areas for gender equality globally. Among them was how to a women participation in leadership, the, the young girl, the, the place of a girl child, mm. and the affirmative action for women in politics. Uganda had the better affirmative action platform for women as compared to Kenya. And uh, given that foundation from the Beijing platform, where we had then the first female vice, vice president in Africa, Dr. Speciosa Kazube, mm. who led a powerful delegation with the renowned Miriam Atemba and others in a meeting with the likes of Hillary Rodman Clinton mm. as a first lady of the US. I, I thought that many questions, many questions on the gender were resolved in that conference. And what remained was action. The, the Beijing conference did not just stop at, first there were the big fives, the big mm. fives of the girl child fighting poverty, women in leadership, and women in conflict resolution. And then you go to the 12 critical areas and then the plan of implementation. Mm. So what the countries needed from Beijing was just to copy and paste in their national mechanisms. Mm. We tried a great deal in copying. If you go under the national objectives and directives of state policy, we have objective six, mm. 
it's about to the realization of, 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 the, of what was resolved in Benjung, the, the human empowerment. And then it's operationalized from Articles 30 to 33 in the Constitution. Yeah. But also we have the gender national policy, the affirmative action, which goes up to schools, mm. universities, entry, travel, DC, mm. and other areas. Really mainstreaming mm. the uplifting of a girl child throughout the system. Mm. The, the, the lacuna in our legal framework is the retention of a third, a third provision of women. When the world, including the African Union, Constitutive Act under Objective 6, Agenda Number 6 of African Union Agenda 2030, and, and other instruments mm. which have gone to 50 50 mm. gender parity. So we are still talking of a third mm. when everybody else is at gender parity. Mm. I know that Rwanda has achieved much in terms of gender parity. We can only discuss whether there is a trickle down of mm. that. And, and Uganda's challenge is top level patronage mm. that has turned women into, you know, I, I don't even know how to describe it, but every woman to get where they are, they must have a good father. So the men have taken over. The women emancipation process, they determine which woman can become a woman MP, which woman can become a VP. So you don't see women emerging on their own the way we see Martha Karua in Kenya, mm. the way we see Charity and Jiro in Kenya, they don't have to be to play the, the, the goddaughter role, 21. Doctor, you have reason to where you are today. Was it on your own merit? But I'm in private sector. Even if, even if. No, no, I'm, I'm, that, uh, but let me first build my point, mm. because there's a big distinction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When you look at the, the women in Kenya, they are self-made. Mm. They don't need to please anyone to mm. get to the mm. positions mm. where they are. They are where they are on merit. Mm. In Uganda, uh, let me take an example of the immediate vice president, because now we have our second female vice president. Mm. I've seen on her Twitter handle, she has posted twice. <laughs> I have gone to represent the Minister of Education. In, in leadership, nobody delegates upwards. Nobody reports downwards. Mm. So we have upward delegation mm. of a minister of education who also doubles as a first lady. They're getting a vice president who is number two in the country. You have a cabinet minister taking a vice president as her tea girl. And then you have a vice president reporting mm -hmm. to a cabinet minister. Yes, I, I went there and this is <laughs> what happened. Is do we are we do we really madam, are we in charge? But madam, this is <laughs> <laughs> so the vulgarization mm. of leadership and institutions in this country is this is demonstrated in the conduct of the vice president mm. and the first lady. Mm. And I think the vice president forgets that she's occupying a constitutional office mm. and she wants a good mother somewhere because of our patronage mm. and, and, and our and our vulgarization of democracy in the country. Okay, just in a nutshell, do you think that the NRM has <laughs> amplified has amplified the participation of women in social, economic, and political dispensation? Or you don't think that top level that? women? Mm. We are in the boardrooms. Mm. We are in parliament. Although our part, our participation is at forty percent, cabinet mm. is at forty four percent. Mm -hmm. But is there trickle down to a grassroots mm -hmm. woman? Mm. In, in Uganda, women emancipation benefits the elite. Yeah. Mm. When it comes to middle-level, grassroots women, they are still where patriarchy is. Gender-based violence still and all. All the vices are happening to the rural woman. Mm. And we think we have arrived and we have abandoned the rural woman and there's a disconnect. But then why can't, why can't these women who have been empowered enough to be women members of parliament, why can't they then be able to try to address some, some of those vices that they should be privileged to know because that is where they've come from. I thought that now that they are better placed in society, they would then try to uplift 
or try to uh, to debunk the patriarchy. And Where do the... they derive their legitimacy yeah, yeah, from? Yeah. Mm. I have told you about the Godfather thing. Mm. Ever, if you went today and mm. conducted a honest survey mm. of these MPs, mm. everyone had a big man bringing them to, to power, either through money mm. or giving them a patronage network. Mm. So you have these women MPs deriving their legitimacy from mm. their godfathers and not from the grassroots woman who mm. is a voter. Mm. So they do not see any purpose of connecting mm. and serving. Or do they have the capacity to do so? The, 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 of first of all, there is no need mm. for them to serve mm. the grassroots woman mm. because they will retain the power. We are in a highly commercialized politics. Mm -hmm. If I have businessman X, funding me and mm. giving me a platform to use and I'm able to win. Mm. I just need to please businessman X. Mm. I do not need to serve the people. Mm. If I have the uh, my godfathers are ABC, mm. they are the ones whose interests I will champion so, mm. because they will bring me back to the same the office. office. Mm. So the poor grassroots woman has no capacity to even call these leaders to account mm. because of patronage, mm. elaborate patronage mm. system mm. by the, the, by the NRM and the people who benefit from the mm. NRM government, especially but, the but, private mm. sector. But it, it, is, was, it, it is mainly the electoral system. See, we have affirmative action for women, mm. but it is actually punishment to them. If you see a woman standing in Kampala, and has to campaign in the whole of Kampala. Uh, the, what you call patronage, it's because she can't have the capacity to create an electoral mm. uh, machinery for the whole of Kampala. So she has to ally with the various people standing in, in different places. Because mm. look at it, uh, we are in Kampala, look at somebody standing in Kampala and campaigning in the whole of Kampala. Mm. I don't know how many polling stations there are. For that lady to get agents at every polling station, the cost. Mm. Uh, uh, takes a lady campaigning in Wakiso. Mm. Mm? Now that is affirmative action because she campaigns against another lady. Mm. But you imagine these several the the, yes of campaigning. That's mm. why I was trying to say there is a system where the ladies don't have to be burdened in that manner, mm. and that system proportional representation system you would have to, to to show your worth in your party. And then they put you on the list. Mm. And they, 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 if we have 300 uh, uh, constituencies, uh, they, you have a male, a, 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 a woman. Uh, and the woman can be used, and the male can be used. And you cater for all of them. But part of the problem is that that patronage is is, is 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 because of yes and in commercialization the, in the, in the commercialization UK, of in the UK this mm. is now prime minister mm. she they almost got rid of, of her because they had uh, put her in uh, with someone to tutor to tutor her and they ended up becoming friends and and the other one uh, had had a divorce. This one's husband didn't go that far, but the constituency wanted to recall her mm. because the thing was in, 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 the, in the papers and so on. And, and that is the same system that we have, we have over there. In, in the places where they have, the reason Winnie Mandela was always on, on the list was because of her post as chairman of the Women's League. Not because she was Mandela's wife, no, because of her post. Mm. As, as, so yeah. she was among the first ten on the list, and she could uh, until she, she was. Um, and, and so the, the, there is a need to examine uh, lots lots of these things. I will say, okay, we have many problems, but the biggest problem we have is our electoral system. I can tell you. Mm. And, and the, the youth, the youth can't imagine. Where do they get the money to campaign? The mm. same money affects many that's women. That's the women. Mm. No? That is the women. Now, in, in the proportional representation system, the party can decide it will be 
and they will make it. And they will reflect the youth, they will reflect the regions, they will reflect everybody on, on, on that part of this. Mm. If, yes, I, if I may conclude, mm. uh, Ruto, uh, before we go away from Kenya, mm. Ruto promised the 50-50 cabinet. Yes, again. He delivered the 30 cabinet. Yeah. <coughs> so I think the women of Kenya need to remind Ruto of mm. his gender parity promise. Mm. and see whether he can still make a good of it. Because mm. he, he, he some it up louder mm. among his he promises on the campaign trail. Mm. And even me as an observer, I picked it. Mm. I, I kept counting. I don't know how many times I counted uh, to, to try to get the percentage of cabinet. Mm. I kept thinking I've missed mm. some name. Mm. Went to the pictures to make sure I've picked all the female. And, mm. and it's around 37. Yeah. Which I think is a is not good. Yeah, you know, um, I am sub substantially persuaded by the party list, mm. meaning internal party list, and electoral reforms that includes um, uh, proportional representation. But Sarah's point still on the challenges facing women, mm. even under that system, perhaps even in contemporary South Africa, the power of patronage and the power of us men polity still remains at the top, that is one. But number two, which is the credit to UPC, is my view, is that actually this should be about much more substantive beyond the numbers game. And I think again, Sarah hinted into that. And that's why I told this program in a different context, that as early as 1963, the deliberate founding and beefing up of girl-child educational systems, quality across the country, because education is the number one equalizer. Making sure that you create a health system that is not only integrated, but also that focuses on the need of the most vulnerable, in most cases, women and children. And that you do so in agriculture, and you do so in poverty and education. Of course, our famous mantra was that one of, if you want to deal with poverty, ignorance, and disease. That was our UPS mantra at the time, but in the broader sense. But also, on the other, on the Beijing po po uh, uh, platform, platform. Mm. Pre-Beijing was Nairobi, yeah. uh, which was headed by Mama Miri, which started the movement started quite amazingly that women were doing this thing, but rather blind lens, many cases possibly lonely. Um, and, and so when these leaders, women, returned to their nation states, I'm not quite sure how many took many of them seriously. In Uganda, of course, for us, quickly, the coup happened. But it's very interesting, Sarah, that in 1991, um, UPC had the first de facto leader in Cecilio Guel. And she had general reasonable power. I worked with her. And of course, that's a colleague of Muse Rizindana. But I'm also saying this, that from the experience that you raised, Muse, I have been going around the country and I've picked on something for which I'm campaigning very deliberately. And that is the, the, uh, the disproportionate uh, disadvantage to district chairpersons in terms of remunerations and resources as individuals, and same with women uh, 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 leaders. That while we actually at oh, the amount of money these guys get, if you pick, and that's what the point is making, that a, a, a district, a, 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 a woman who represents the entirety of a district has got to go across all these spaces, and yet that is a district maybe with six legislators, one of whom is a municipality between the journey of the next three, four miles, and you cross to the other end. These are some of the things to be looked at. But for me, um, I had already been saying that beyond actually having women at district representatives, I was beginning to say from a UPC perspective that maybe we need to begin to make this compulsory in, in party list systems in such a manner that and the British Labour Party did this, although the national polity is not necessarily proportional, where um, um, if you delegates to party conferences, constituencies that have got two delegates, one of them must be 50-50 constituencies with three delegates, the two must be women, something along those lines. So I think it's also about the reorientating ourselves, our society and the community. Mm -hmm. And that is why I nearly took, uh, I, I hope I got it wrong, uh, on the question of Kenya to Sarah, the point that uh, women leaders already represented uh, m could easily take the blame for not doing it that very well. I think that is what we in society do, and particularly we male society do, that uh, we tend to pick very unfairly on the challenges and shortcomings of women 
and then we forget about the institutions. Whatever happens. No, no, no. Joseph, my mm. point was no, that it's, one, it's, once you mm. have reached the leadership, mm. then it's about your values and what you stand for. And it ceases to be a gender. Because a man can make a mistake. A woman can make a mistake. I'm not disagreeing with you. And yeah. by the way, it was a link between yeah. you and, yeah. and Moyes. Mm. Mm. And I was trying to say, I hope Moyes mm. was not making the point that okay. it was because it's a woman. Yes. Because sometimes okay. we tend to go for that. I'm also yeah. very clear yeah. on this, that yeah. it should not be about that. Mm. And it should not be... Of course, yeah. about justice and mm. rights should not be mm. about you know, mm. gender equality. Mm. But then finally on Kenya. You know the amazing thing, Sarah? Mm. Um, Ruto, before you know, his appointment in cabinet, the number of mid in a number of uh, photographs that came showing his team. I was shocked several times um, that this guy could last line himself up with seven men yeah. and no woman. Yes. And those pictures kept on, and it kept on rolling in my head. What's going on here? Now then fast forward to the cabinet. I saw that with interest. Mm. That um, it was it was much far less than expected. That's why mm. I would say that perhaps when it comes to gender equality. Uh, um, Kenya, by and large, you know, politically, consciously, is neither here nor there. It would not be surprising that some people even went ahead and said Martha was a disadvantage. Forget about other issues, but because it's a woman. And then I, I know somebody very senior, actually, now in cabinet in Kenya, said that Kenya was not ready for a, a, a woman president. And for mm -hmm. that reason, they could not trust uh, <coughs> a candidate with a woman as a possible vice president. So therefore, mm -hmm. a possible president in the next five years. What? I mean, Oh, yes, yes. No. that yeah, happened. But, but because Kenya, by the way, the, the affirmative action, because now they have women representatives, mm. but I think this is their second term. Yeah. It's, mm. a, it's a new thing. Yes. It came with a new constitution. It mm. has just been implemented. Mm. Whereas Uganda has we, been we, we doing need... it for, for quite a while. Even in NRC, before the constitution, mm. we had women representatives. Mm. Mm. We, we need to condemn this. Mm. And I think it's something that needs yes. to change. Yeah. It should change in Kenya. Kenya, structurally, institutionally, is mm. much more able mm. to push these things forward generally, mm. but at the space at which they are, I think it needs to be criticized. Mm. And I think yes. the Kenyan civil society, indeed the Kenyan women, and all of us actually, should simply say that these are things that need to be able to change. It should not only change in Kenya, it should change across this continent. Mm. In part for the reasons that are given by, by, by Sarah, mm. but in part these are common sense core things that are said. Our founding parents, so in 1963, pushed in a, their own different ways. Mm. There's no reason why we should be struggling with today mm. and to make sure that it's just something that's merely a fashion show. It's not. Well, very insightful. Mm -hmm. Let me come to you. Mm -hmm. One of the lessons that I think we concerned about on this conversation is the independence of the institutions in Kenya. Relative. The, okay. <laughs> Relative. Mm -hmm. You look at the IEBC, you look at the judiciary, at least there's some level of independence. Contrary to Uganda that has had questions around independence of institutions, mm. in your own view, what do you think are some of the things that need to be done for us to achieve independent institutions? Is it a, about the appointment of these um, officers? Is it about security of tenure? What exactly needs to be done for us to have an independent electoral commission, independent judiciary, so that you know, eventually justice can be, can be done? Uh, uh, no, it, it is the context of mm. each country. Okay. Uh, I don't think the, there is much of a difference in law mm. uh, uh, in the provision for the independence of the institutions here in Uganda and the institutions in Kenya. Mm. And the, 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 uh, here here we, we, we have a history of an overbearing presidency here uh, for, mm. for a very long time. And, and in the Kenya context, uh, other than the first two, uh, the first two presidents, the others have been fairly liberal. Mm. Uh, they they, 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 they <coughs> have been uh, fairly liberal. Mm. Uh, that liberal aspect has been missing from Uganda for a very long time. Uh, the comment I wanted to make when uh, our colleague was talking about UPC. Uh, the UPC and all other independ post-independence parties, unfortunately, they are, they, they've been declining for a very long time. But I think there is something which they don't emphasize, which we should not lose. Mm. Mm. The ideological anchor of UPC was social democracy. And 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 and, uh, and social democracy and and what we can carry on with 
is social justice. Mm. In the Kenya context, they have not had mm. a, a party which was social democratic other than uh, Raira once in a while. Mm. <laughs> mm. 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 Yes. Other than uh, there has been, they, 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 are, they, they are more like the, the DP here. DP was more of Christian Democrat, but the other, but ideologically on the same. Now, in a, the context of countries developing like this one, mm. the, a, 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 robust, a robust state, the state must be robust. Mm. 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 It, it's, in, it, it's intervention in the economy, it's intervention in, the, in education, it's intervention in health and so on, it must re, be robust. So when we accepted the, uh, the World Bank IMF formula of uh, so, private mm -hmm. sector aid and so on, the, the, the muting of the role of the state has been a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. So you do eventually the, the state has disappeared in the financial sector, in, in, the, in, in the industry, and, and so, which is not the same in, in in Kenya, the parastatals are quite alive mm -hmm. and, and very uh, strong. Mm. And, 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 and so, and so that is some, the thread that we need, uh, uh, we need to, uh, to look at. Because, for example, uh, now at my age, I can tell you, mm. if, if you don't have medical insurance mm. now at your age, mm. you better get it because at a later stage, you fail, you to, fail get to get it. Yeah. And you are not catered for by the mm, state, mm, by mm, anyone. Mm. You must have the funds yourself. Mm, <laughs> mm, mm, <laughs> for, for, and that is mm, the same mm, uh, for education, for, mm, uh, uh, for other things. So, so the element of social justice is something we need to be looking for mm. in the agenda of the various political parties. Mm, mm, mm. And, and uh, in the Kenya context, that's not there, mm. the, 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 the social justice thing, no, mm. Mm. no, it, 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 it's, mm. it's, uh, it's, in fact, the first act mm. of, 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 of Ruto, Ruto. Mm. Uh, the, credit, uh, the credit reference yes. bureau has been ordered <laughs> to, 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 uh, to forget the, the, the blacklist it had. Every, the blacklist has, has been lifted. It, it completely. Mm, but, it, but also Ruto made another statement, which I thought was not accurate, mm. that Ugandans are saving more. Because he forgot that the saving entities in Kenya are liberalized. Yes. So you have several saving entities. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whereas in Uganda, we have one entity. No, and he just fact, looked. In fact, those yeah. in the health sector in, in Kenya mm. uh, 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 have more money than NSSF. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so that statement mm. was not actually mm. among us the, the transition. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It was that Ugandans are saving more than Kenya. The, uh, it can't be possible in an economy that is the NHIF, times NHIF, than Uganda. Indeed. Hmm. Uh, in Kenya, has more money than the and then of course, uh, and and they collect a little two two hundred yeah. shillings yeah. for 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 insurance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for health insurance, five five entitled five hundred yeah. entitled you to. So there the, there is an element we they need to lose, mm. and 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 we so in the other thing we learn from Kenya, and that's why I, mm. the the Uganda context. The older parties have become very rigid. If you want to work for them, they, with them, they will tell you about but or do, your PC. Do they we, still we have been in the government for two, two, twice. Two times. Yeah, then, Muse, you know, we'll Muse, Muse, <laughs> You're welcome, wait, please. Then the, we shall have the, a conversation after the, this. <laughs> then the DP will tell you we've been in existence since <laughs> like, before. before. Independence, yeah. <laughs> I, know, I get And it. you have to deal with. We, 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 that is in mm. Kenya that does not exist. Mm. When an election is coming, you sit and, you, and, and you say, well, what, what can you bring on the table? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and this one, what can you bring on the And then, and then you, walk, uh, you walk out I, the phone. I think they have a business approach to politics. <laughs> you, you but, but actually, can I, can I criticize ourselves? <laughs> very, very importantly. <laughs> very important, Mzee. There's a very important point you make about us, you 
UPC and DP mm. that we bossed too much. <laughs> and the, the, the absolute... About the... the no, we bossed about glory, ourselves. Past the no, glory. No, but I, yeah, and I totally agree. But there's an important point I want to make to the youth of this country. Mm. That actually is extremely discouraging. It's an, I know it's a major turn off to young guys unless they have space to understand, okay, you bossed, you did this, you did this, you did this. What about the future? So in terms of going forward, since we're looking at transition in Kenya and we're also doing within the context of Uganda going forward, it's an important point that political leaders in this country, and so it's not only a message for both the UPC and DP, but it's a message really for existing political parties. Hmm. We need to be able to have a conversation about hope, yeah. about possibilities, about opportunities yeah. are going forward for this country. And that's why yeah. these lessons, these yeah. lessons of yours should not be lessons for us to pocket and put in the fires, but mm. should be po lessons mm -hmm. that unlock your potentials and your capacities mm. and give hope to younger people. And that's, I really want to say that. And mm. yes, political leaders ought to be able to see that. Mm. All right, thank you. Doctor, let me come to you. Uh, Kenya Kwanzaa, the coalition, enjoys uh, numerical advantage in the National Assembly. The Speaker, Right Honorable Moses Wetangula, was also part of Kenya Kwanzaa. They appear to have uh, numerical strength and advantage. Do you think that, uh, as in Wola Moja, has capacity to actually audit and to actually uh, call Kenya Kwanzaa to account and to check and balance them and to regulate their excesses, given the given the bi bipartisan uh, politics. Point of correction: mm. By the way, Zimio has more MPs than, than Kenya Kwanzaa in the National Assembly. Yes, but Kenya Kwanzaa has, a, by a difference of one, one more senator. Before the nominations yeah, yeah. above us in you in the Senate. Then how so, did the speaker uh, Kenya win? Kwanza, no, I'm coming to that. Mm -hmm. Kenya Kwanza won the Senate by one vote mm -hmm. before before they nominated members. Mm -hmm. And Azimio had mm -hmm. majority in the parliament. Mm -hmm. So the race for the speakership actually mm -hmm. surprised me. So but it is also a demonstration of the aggressiveness of Kenya Kwanza. Mm -hmm. So they were able to campaign and have Azimio MPs. Mm. We need voting for a yeah. but the majority and, is as mio as mio. in the, the oh, parliament and independence. Yeah, and mm. independence. So they had independence. They swayed mm. independence and as mio mm. members mm. to vote for a mm. But as mio is the has the majority in parliament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even in the governorship, mm. I think as mio mm. has Governor, more governors. has yeah. more governance than Kenya Kwanzaa. Really? Okay. Yes. That's right. But yeah. just, but, just, but uh, yeah. I think maybe if I conclude before he comes in, mm. I, I think also. Maybe some of the MPs, through their independent decisions, wanted a, a transition. Because I think if you had a parliament chaired by Azmio, then you have, a, you know, it would create friction. friction. So I think those who voted mm. for, for Kenya Kwanza candidate mm. maybe wanted also a smooth tr a government that, that runs smoothly. Mm. Because they were making, I, we, we need to credit that the other difference is that mm. the the issue of tyrant of numbers uh, and uh, you know watching MPs in parliament how they vote we had the session in our parliament where the prime minister would turn and uh, <coughs> keep looking at, at the MPs <laughs> but we need to let people act <laughs> independent <laughs> we need to let people act out of their consciousness and and make decisions you don't hold them at ransom because they belong to your party. Where they are required to make independent decisions, mm. I saw our MPs fighting over year elections. Mm -hmm. Imagine, mm -hmm. a elections, mm. a full ticket, ballot books appeared, mm. pretty ticket. Mm. Imagine MPs voting for East African Assembly and you have a pretty ticket, mm. ballot books in Uganda. Do you think that the decision to choose a smooth government running at the expense of accountability might come back no, to No, no, no. As might, might then, as a party Kenya. in opposition, mm. I think it's better to let the party in power mm. run. But the party in opposition, mm. you have your constitutional mandate mm. to check them. Okay. So I think they are in a better position to mm. check Kenya Kwanza. They don't lose that mandate. Okay. Yeah. I, I have okay. a slightly different view. Mm. Uh, one, actually, the, the, the numbers... Uh, Kenya Kwanzaa acted as robustly the way they did leading to elections with that alleged, alleged buying of these guys 
uh, uh, and compromising many of these guys to their side. Yes. You what know? if they convinced you? No, but neither here, but that's why I say alleged, you know. <laughs> okay. But, but, but that, that is there and the possibilities are there, in, mm. in, including with some very persuasive evidence. Mm. But neither here nor there, but those are mm. their rights and they did in Kenya mm. and we're mm. talking as observers. Mm. But number two, your earlier question actually notwithstanding, mm. um, it shouldn't really matter in a democracy since we're talking about going forward. Mm. And I've got, you know, got, mm. three of us have got reasonable experience of mm. parliaments elsewhere. Mm. That um, um, even in the likely event, Sarah, mm. that, uh, that uh, Azimio had, had the majority and yeah. had the speaker, yes. it actually would possibly have made a very interesting, robust debate for the next parliament. And so let the other side prove themselves. And actually, in terms of critiquing government and actually putting Ruto holding him to account to make sure that his win is a real tested win on issues, mm -hmm. that it would have been contested. Granted, it holds government a bit in mm -hmm. terms of government program deliveries, you know. Especially but Especially polarized nation. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Yeah. But Half were divided. And, and it's, you're, 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 you're absolutely right that they could easily go ahead and do yeah. massive it politics. Meaning, further meaning, polarize. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. meaning that you want to go ahead and mm -hmm. maybe a sabotage rather than mm. to move it forward. Mm. But I think what is lacking in this region and part of the contradiction is exactly what's happening now on legislative legis legis assembly here, mm. where people are going to be whipped to take particular positions. Um, during the early co conversation around the early elections, uh, um, my views were sought variously and actually thought that, uh, no, no, actually, the, the last uh, parliament, you know, after the, 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 the demise of uh, uh, Jacob Olanya, I actually argued that possibly it was not a bad idea, you know, if perhaps the post even went to an opposition leader in a polarized nation like this. But I, the, your point is very persuasive. Where we have a country in which we have legislators, leaders, first of all, political parties, and you know, leaders of political parties, and political leaders, and leaders of opposition, and legislators at the level of a legislative assembly, where people know really what their roles are, it is actually possible that you go in there and you legislate on issues and on rights and you be conscious, depending on the, the ideological questions, where you stand on a particular issue, and possibly independent of the political party that you support. And I've seen it happen Freedom elsewhere. Freedom for dissent, which we don't have in our parties even. Well, so unfortunately, the, the, yes. The, yes. So the comparison the crossing the party with, and yes. parliament. Yes. Mm. You know, in a proper democracy, there should be freedom for dissent. That's true. Mm. In, in, a, in a, a party, you know, I think it would be funny, 100% agreement. You should have people voting for and against mm. on any issue. And you should be able to accommodate that mm. and take feedback and listen to their side of argument mm. to build and see where to improve even when you have majority. Mm -hmm. you, would, you should take care of the concerns. Because mm. a democracy is where majority have their say. But the minority have their way. And they have, mm. <laughs> the minority have their, the majority have their way. And they might not have their say so, and their voice. Mm. So you have one, fine. I think for me, I would be comfortable with a 65% win, even in internal party processes. Mm, 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 mm. Then listen to the 45 as a way for improvement. As much and as that's you what have it's all about, yeah. your way. Critiquing yeah, and persuading so and bringing. This is what yeah. we lack in our democracies. Even in parliament, you mm. have an NRM person voting against a, a position, mm. they are treated as outcasts. Mm. To the extent that we have a court decision mm. where NRM wanted to expel three MPs mm. regarded as rebels, mm. where the speaker had to create chairs in front of her mm. because they had no side where to sit until the ruling of the Supreme Court. Mm. You know, very funny. Shameful, yeah. shameful. Yeah. Mm. shameful. Moshimiwa, I want to come to you. Mm. Mm. Uh, we are speaking transition in Kenya, but mm. is there a bigger transition in the political trajectory that Kenya is shifting from this whole dynasty, I must be from this family or from this family, for me to rise up to that level of political leadership. But now it's, it's being opened up to any Kenya, to the hustlers, anyone can rise up from anywhere and assume you know, political leadership. Is there a transition even in that regard? No, I, I don't think we can talk of a transition. We can talk of consolidation. Mm. That uh, the, 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 the democracy in, in Kenya is being more consolidated. The, uh, the, the dynasty thing was, was a slogan. Mudavadi mm. um, on the other side mm. became a, uh, an MP as soon as his father, when his father died. Mm. The word became uh, was, an elect MP and elected vice was elected and immediately became a minister. I think before thirty, mm. uh, there mm. is no more. Uh, the, 
the, the, that thing was directed at Uhuru and, and Raila. Mm. And yet Raila, uh, w w w what is the dynastic thing about that? He, he went to jail like his father. He inherited the position. <laughs> 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 no, in in fact, the, <laughs> let, me, let me tell you, the Uhuru position mm. was, 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 was uh, uh, it, it was a position I, I could admire. Mm. He, he saw the rift between his family and mm. the, and the mm. family of, of, of right. uh, Ojinga mm. and wanted to, to heal it. Mm. And, and, and because they, when they were still friends, mm. they were growing up together as children. Mm. Mm. Huh? Mm. And Ojinga Dinga refused the invitation to, f to form a government when uh, 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 Kenyatta was in jail. Was in jail. Mm. He said, no, we have our leader. Mm. And, and, uh, and, and then, of course, uh, Kenyatta comes, becomes prime minister, president, and the other one is in the deputy. Mm. They disagree on the ideological, mm. on the ideological line. And purely ideological, mm. in fact. And, and, and eventually, it led, it led to, to, to very huge rifts. Mm. Uh, 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 to the extent that, for example, the Mboya family was with the Kenyatta yes, family yes. and could not have anything to do with the, 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 yes. the mm. other ones and mm. so on. So this is what he was trying to heal. Mm. And, and I think bringing back the original uh, uh, political alliance, the original alliance was of, of, of Nyanza and, and the central region. Mm. The, the, the other ones were in Kadu. There was a party called Kadu mm. of, the smaller, mm. of the smaller ethnic groups. And that's what uh, Moi was leading. Mm. So when Ojinga gets out of, of power, Kenyatta invites Kadu. Uh, when we were students, I remember mm. Ojinga coming to address us and, and they say, that the present Kanu is the former Kadu. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and so mm. the issue of, of dynasties is not it was is, propaganda. Mm. No, no, it was it was a political uh, uh, propaganda, and mm. and I don't think it is what worked. I I saw the messaging, the, the Raila mm. messaging. Mm. The, the, it was a bit problematic. Mm. Mm. Uh, you ha you have high prices, and your main thing is addressing the old. The old independence problems of, of ignorance, disease, and like, whereas this one is talking about the price of fertilizer, mm. the price of water, the price of mm. and and, and <laughs> there was <laughs> so actually that's very interesting. So you think he actually went to Middle Kenya, which would not necessarily have gone to the yes, to the law there of the was a okay, problem. Yeah, yeah. There was a <laughs> oh yes, mm. there was a there was a messaging. Messaging. Okay. They were on, mm. on the governance issue mm. Mm. Of, of constitutionalism, of human rights, mm. of, of and, and, and so the big issues rather than the yeah, bread, they, and, butter. The bread, bread and, and butter. And butter yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. yeah. yeah. Mm? Well, mm. Mr. Cheney, lastly, yeah. is the Kenyan system a winner take all, or there is some bit of proportionality attached to it? No, it's a winner take all, and as 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 um, Zay is saying, mm. Mm. it's predominant the predominant system mm. on, on the continent. Mm. Uh, but I think considering the manner in which they are working, some, some, the, the, some of their reforms around the county governments and things like that, mm. maybe an outcome of this election, particularly because it's not been necessarily that very excessive, very, very well conclusive, it may be a conversation, particularly if Azimio settled and then they begin to having big debates and Azimio, you trust them on, on mm. big issues and big debates. We're possibly seeing a constitutional reform, so possibly the... the, 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 the um, the, the party list systems and the proportional representation is possibly more likely to come to life sooner in Kenya than perhaps here in Uganda. Mm. And so that said, I, I think maybe it's a lesson for us here, here, in, here in Uganda. Mm. But I just want to say again that I actually think that while we are looking at winner takes all as necessarily bad quality, mm. it is not the, it's not that. Mm. It's a question of ideology, it's a question of leadership. It is actually possible for a winner take all uh, 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 um, political system to say that I govern for the country and of course I can proudly say again UPC that by and large we think mm -hmm. we need govern for the country and look at the core issues and deal with them uh, mm -hmm. as a political party knowing that this nation state is together and if I just may say so in another program uh, there was a program uh, where in 1969 what he was saying is since we were talking about the yellow siren mm -hmm. 
uh, I saw that clip that Obote was addressing the Iyala uh, members of uh, UPC. Um, I don't know whether it was at Tanzania or he was seeing them off. And he was saying that uh, we are sending you to the EAC, you know, but you're going as Uganda um, East African members of parliament. But when you reach that parliament, you you not be legislating for Uganda, you'll be legislating for East Africa. Yeah. So I think this is a very powerful Africanist thing, mm. meaning therefore as a nation state of Uganda, perhaps a nation state of Kenya, we need to begin to learn those lessons. And perhaps you young guys who are emerging as leaders, regardless of the positions in which you take, mm. well, <laughs> please let's try and focus on this big thing, Uganda, that when we're having a conversation for education and health, uh, perhaps even infrastructure, or perhaps even affirmative or youth representation, uh, we think in Tungamo. Uh, we possibly think what's happening in Kidepo. Yeah. And we think about some place in rural uh, Bugiri the other day. I saw it on my way to Toro. What are really the big issues? And yeah. then we, in terms of addressing, we address it at the core. So yeah. maybe we need to be able to do that. So that after that, maybe leaders emerge yeah. that in the absence of um, a constitutional reform for... Because even the constitutional reform does not guarantee these things if there's yeah. no leadership. Yeah. And if you like, you know, core values and ideological reasons, driving and systems and institutions in place, enabling these things to happen. So I hope uh, uh, that is something that is for our leaders. But it's more about leadership and delivery rather than necessarily the systems. But the systems are important. Well, thank you very much. Let's just take last words from each and every one of you. Of course, we shall give uh, our guest the honor to give us his last words. Mm. So I'll begin with you, Mr. Chenna, mm. then doctor, then conclude with uh, Honorable. Your last words on the show. Our time is fast spent. Yes, Mr. Chenna. I think I possibly spoke just conclusively. Good luck to Kenyans. Maybe let's learn from them while I think the challenge is still on Ruto mm. to show leadership, while the challenge is still on Ruto to, uh, to bring together Kenya, and the challenge is still on Ruto to deliver on, um, on, on his key gender parity. <laughs> gender parity. Mm. And the challenge is Ruto to try and uh, deliver on some of the miraculous economic miracle things that he suggests, I don't know where you'll get the money for. Uh, um, the responsibility also lies with uh, all other Kenyans uh, coming together and rallying together and perhaps the other side reorganizing themselves to wait for and prepare for, for the next time. But I just hope that um, um, there is no purging that takes place in Kenya, notwithstanding, because um, there was this story about um, a former ICC lawyer that was found dead. That was a shocking story in Kenya, notwithstanding. Yes. And it's one that we hope does not have an indication about a possibility of a, a drawback to the political and democratic process and, and human rights process in that country. But that said, maybe as Uganda and East Africa, but particularly as Uganda, there are lessons we should learn from, from, from Kenya. And I think, as Mr. Augustine said, maybe I hope those guys in power, those guys in position, those guys who were the ears of Mr. Museveni, need to tell him that, well, I think the time is near to begin to review, to make sure that we return Uganda to a national uh, uh, table in which there is a genuine dialogue and perhaps a genuine national truth and reconciliation commission so that you young people are able to get the truth of this country, but able to make sure that the truth of this country is one that you're able to change and turn mm -hmm. around, not in revenge, but in bailing for our future. And as I said, uh, uh, um, doing so for, for God and my country. Thank you. Yes, Doctor. I, I think uh, let me speak about the transition that uh, a peaceful transition, political peaceful transition, does not happen out of the blue. It must have a competent civic citizenry, civically competent citizenry, which to a large extent exists in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Kenyans do not shy away from participating in their elections. They lead in Kenya, all the intelligentsia are deeply involved mm -hmm. in Kenya's political processes, and as you saw in the cabinet list, I think I was able to see two professors, mm -hmm. but they could three, be more. three, perhaps. Yeah, yeah they could mm -hmm. be more, but I was looking at the law professors. And the real professors. Of course. <laughs> and uh, then the, yes, the private sector, the corporate agencies in Kenya, they participate <clears throat> in their politics, mm -hmm. and they hold a clear stake with their feet, not just mm -hmm. talking. So and, and this, that's one lesson we need to pick as Ugandans and participate in the governance of our country. The second lesson is on uh, governance institutions that need to be independent, that need to be empowered to hold the country together and quantify the will of the people as to who should govern them, as well as protect and defend the fundamental rights and freedoms of the people. The third element is a mechanism for conflict resolution. We, I know we've discussed the role of the judiciary in Kenya and uh, most of the landmark decisions 
that I hope will work as precedent for Africa as we try to advance our democratic processes. We need to build this as Ugandans. Yes, thank you. Yes, Honorable. Um, we have a lot to learn from Kenya, and I suspect they also have a lot to learn from us. Um, they, they have passed certain milestones, mm. and some of them have been uh, because of the experience they've gone through. I think the ICC experience <laughs> yeah. frightened the political yes. class. And during the elections, no one could organize for violence. Mm. They knew the ICC was hanging over, over there, and it has uh, worked out as a, a deterrent. But uh, what we need to learn from them, if you look at their constitutional provisions and so on, uh, they are not very different from ours, but their institutions have grown. Mm. They have grown, they have stabilized, they are hugely respected, mm. uh, hugely respected, and, and uh, we, we, we need to learn that from them, that institutions uh, uh, must be respected, they must be strengthened. Then systems, systems must be in place. If you have systems, then you are able actually to examine whether they have been violated or not, mm -hmm. and you could see how they were examining the transmission of, of results, of results the, the, the voting system and so on, uh, the, 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 systems, uh, the systems are in place. Mm. Uh, I do think that certain things are going to be lost along the way. The Azmio, part of the Azmio message was the fight against corruption. Mm. And, and, and you remember the the candidate had given uh, his deputy a responsibility on, 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 on uh, the constitution, uh, evaluating the constitution and making the necessary amendments and, and so on. Now, this may be lost, the, 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 the need, the need for accountability, the need for transparency, the need for you know, fighting corruption, because it was a prominent message in, in the defeated, uh, in the, the defeated as Mio, and on the other side, on the other side, it was not, they were on, on the defensive. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, 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 our, our economies are still uh, very weak. Once there are huge leakages at the center, now they have decentralized that uh, at the county level and other, other levels, then they may have a problem of service delivery. Mm -hmm. and, and that is where we... Now, that is also something we need to learn from them. That if you see when they start a road in Kenya, they, they, within the next few months you'll find it finished. Mm -hmm. There is a corruption on that thing. In our case, if you see how many years the northern bypass took. The first phase was 11 years. <laughs> this is second phase, I don't know how many years uh, it is. The, 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 you are not going to make much progress with that type of speed. Mm. And it was funded and, uh, three times. And the escalation, of, was in the budget and the escalation of, of, of costs and so on. Mm. And then finally, mm. the, the, the Kenyans, the Kenyans manage their budget. They complain mm -hmm. about revenue collection and so on, but the revenue collection, I think, is around 25% of GDP or, or something like that, and we, 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 are, we have around half of that. They, their government has money, and they can render a uh, service. Here, I'm Domotu. We talk a lot, and... and uh, <laughs> and, and, the, the, and then uh, finally, <laughs> finally, if you look at the Kenya uh, economy, there is a lot of industrialization. Mm. Uganda, the, in, the, in, the, in the historical times, the, the, there is a, a, a German chancellor, Bismarck, 
who who despising the cold Britain, the country of shopkeepers. Yes. <laughs> and, <laughs> and actually, Uganda is a country of shopkeepers. Yes. All our towns, including investors. All our towns are shop uh, 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 are shops, trading shops and so malls trading and centers. Malls, yes. They are trading centers. We need to move from being a country of, of shopkeepers uh, to a country of of, of, of industries, industries and, mm. and Kenya Kenya is doing that. Mm. There are industries in Kisumu, there are industries in Nakuru, there are industries in Nyeri, there are industries all over, all over, all over the place. So that, that's what we, we need to learn uh, from them. Otherwise, we will only catch up with the population because we are, we are, we are, we are growing faster <laughs> in the population than they, than they are. But we need yes. to catch up in... What a way to end we this. We are working hard on that. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to end this show with a very high sense of humor from you, <laughs> from you Honorable. Thank you, Mr. Chino, for sparing the time. Pleasure. Thank you, uh, Mishimiwa, for sparing the time to be on our conversation. Awesome. Thank you very much, Doctor, for always <laughs> spending the time to be with us. Thank well, you. to the producers, thank you for ensuring that our viewers get this show right on time. Well, that is it from us on the Citizens Chat Show. Until next week, same time, have a lovely weekend. Bye-bye.